On the 1st of July, Liverpool finally shook hands with Mo Salah on a new deal which will see the Egyptian now earn £350,000 per week for the next three years. With that contract extension, Salah became the highest paid player in the history of Liverpool Football Club. If you know Liverpool and their owners FSG, you would know how very adamant they are about breaking their wage structure for anybody, no matter who you are. They've let legends go because they asked for more money, and Mane was only the latest on the list. But these same guys completely bent over backwards for this kid from Nagrig, Basyoun, Egypt. The question now is why? Let's start from the beginning. Salah started out playing football for different youth teams in Egypt, but in 2006, the story began to change. A scout came to the ground where he and the other kids used to play to look out for another kid. But while he was watching the kid play, he was distracted by Salah. The Liverpool man was only 14 at the time, but his play was so captivating that the scout had to pick him. So he joined Al Mokaloon and started playing for their youth team. The club was far from his home, but he was determined to make it big in football, so he made sacrifices. He would miss school and travel about eight hours every day to and from training, and all that sacrifice quickly paid off. In one year, he had caught the attention of the senior team coach, and he was then immediately promoted. But then there was a big problem. Salah was deemed unfit to compete in the Egyptian top flight because his muscles were not fully formed as a result of a poor diet. But according to his former teammate, Ali Fati, Salah didn't care much for the Egyptian top division anyway. He wasn't motivated by a move to Zamalek, Al Ali, or any of the other big Egyptian clubs. He had his eyes on Europe and Europe alone. But he had to start somewhere, right? So he went on a special training and diet program to develop his muscles. Fati, who played with Salah back in Al Mokaloon, confessed that the diet of Egyptian footballers was generally not great, particularly because of their large meat intake. He then went on to say that he never met any Egyptian player who put in as much effort as Salah to correct that diet. And again, the Egyptian king's sacrifices paid off. He dreamed of playing in Europe, and he finally made it to Europe at the age of 20. He joined Basel in 2012, and after just two years in Switzerland, Liverpool came calling. By that time, he chose Chelsea over them, but he would later end up in Merseyside where he would enjoy the most success in his career. We all know how this story goes, so we won't waste time on it. But already we can see one of the reasons Liverpool are willing to splash that sort of money on him every week. He's a very determined lad, and he's never scared to make sacrifices. Apart from that, there's the obvious reason, his impact. Salah really hit the ground running since joining Liverpool in 2017, and you just have to admit, the club has been a lot better since he joined. His 219 direct goal contributions in 254 appearances for the club are simply world-class numbers. And with those goal contributions, he has helped the club to three Champions League finals and perhaps more importantly, a first Premier League title. The club's first league trophy in 30 years. Personally, he has won three Golden Boots, two PFA Player of the Year and one Premier League Player of the Year awards, among many other individual achievements. He's also broken about 10 different records in England, including most goals scored in a single 38-game Premier League season, most Premier League Player of the Month awards in a single season, and highest scoring African in Premier League history. Honestly, who on earth would want to lose this guy that easily? He has proven how very valuable he is to the club, and it's actually not surprising that they eventually broke their wage structure for him. Apart from his impact on the pitch, Salah has done a lot more for Liverpool, both the club and the city. The American Political Science Review did a study last year, and they discovered that Salah's move to Liverpool in 2017 led to a reduction in hate crime in the city by 16%. It also reportedly substantially reduced online Islamophobia by Liverpool fans. Surely, even the government will want him to remain at Anfield. More so, Salah is a favourite among the Liverpool faithful. You can hear how loudly they shout this chant at the top of their voices when he does literally anything on the pitch. He could literally just touch the ball and it's... The fans love 
love him so much, and that probably motivated the owners to bend over to keep him a little longer. And speaking of the owners, this is probably their way of showing that they believe in Klopp and his project. Klopp obviously loves and values Salah, and he believes he can still be very important for Liverpool in the coming years. And considering he's already shown what he can do when he's given what he wants, FSG probably decided it would be much easier to just give him what he wants yet again. Now, there are also some external reasons why Liverpool decided to break the bank for Mo Salah. They've probably had a look at rival clubs and seen how their trust in 30-plus players have paid off. Generally, FSG are always reluctant to give huge contracts to athletes who are nearing the twilight of their careers. But then it's not been a bad gamble for their rivals. You look at De Bruyne at City, Lewandowski at Bayern, Benzema at Madrid, all players in their 30s but still the most important players for their respective clubs, helping them win trophies season after season. Salah is to Liverpool what these guys are to their clubs, and FSG would have hated to see him go elsewhere and put up crazy performances for, say, five more years. Honestly, they did what they had to do. Finally, Salah is a leader in the dressing room, and that is a quality you cannot just go to the transfer market and buy. Liverpool have Van Dijk in defence, Henderson in midfield, and with Mane gone and Firmino now playing a much less significant role, they need Salah to be the leader in that attack and help the younger players. He can serve as a mentor to Jota, Nunes and Luis, who we assume are the heirs to the thrones of Salah, Mane and Firmino. You have to be honest, there's more than enough for them to learn from the Egyptian king. But hey, if we're being really practical in the current economic climate, 350k for a 30-year-old who has won three Premier League golden boots in five years is not too much at all. Salah still has a lot to offer and he has not shown any signs of slowing down at all. We know it's not the Liverpool way to pay huge wages to players, especially ones in their 30s, but Mo Salah is the exact type of player you break traditions for. He's one of the best players in the world and he is surely worth every single penny he is now being given. From the little malnourished kid travelling eight hours to play for Al Mokaloon in Egypt to becoming the highest paid player in Liverpool history, Salah's story is one we can all be inspired by. But what do you think about the new deal though? Did Liverpool make the right move? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye!